Hi there guys, in this video we're going to take another look at overclocking the Horizon 1700 with a Gigabyte AX370 Gaming K5. Now I know I created a video on this a bit ago, however after posting the video I noticed there was a few issues with the actual overclock itself. Uh, also a few things have changed and we've got a new BIOS update so I thought I'd reinvestigate the whole thing uh, to give you a bit more feedback and this time also include how you actually do it on the bus. so on the left you can see I've been running through CPU Z just to show you this is running at stock also a few things have changed since then so as on, on the right you can see Crosshair Links running I've installed an OA cooler just to get the temperatures much better and also I've added an extra two memory sticks bringing the system up to 32 gig however I will be testing the system with two and four sticks to see what I can get so like I said you can see here the temperatures are much much better with an AIO cooler and that was something that was a little bit of an issue with the overclock before uh, the temperatures were starting to get a bit high and the cooler was getting a little bit more noisy uh, the cooler that you get with the Horizon 1700 is pretty good to be honest uh, anyway so um, you can see here we've got a new BIOS update which is F4 which is said to improve DDR compatibility for some strange reason when you go into the app to do the update uh, it doesn't come up with F4 it only comes up with F3 but anyway so when you go to the page just download it um, go stick it somewhere and once you've got it downloaded you will have to open up the zip file so if we go and have a look so you can see here this is the zip file so just double click the only file we want out of all this is the 1.f4 so if we extract that file and put it into uh, the folder here so we've got it ready so what we need to do to actually get everything set up is to update the BIOS I suggest using uh, App Center that's supplied with Gigabyte it seems to be quite a good little tool uh, it allows you to update the BIOS, uh, check a few overclocking settings and also customize your RGB settings so in this one we want the BIOS so if we go into the bus, you can see here we've got, or will do, it will tell you what we've currently got. So you can see some of the settings, and if you come down to the third one down, you can see this is on F3. So like I said, we want to update this to F4, which is the latest one so far. So to do this, normally you would do click from server, but like I said you, it keeps coming up with F3, so just use the downloaded ones. So just to select it, and OK it. Bear in mind, updating your BIOS does have a little bit of risk attached to it, but I, with the Gigabyte, with the dual BIOS, you shouldn't have too much issues here. Uh, anyway, so now we've got the thing to actually update. What I'm going to do is to stop the recording and let the BIOS update without anything affecting it, just in case there is any issues with shadow play uh, or the BIOS flashing. So anyway, I'm going to do the BIOS update, restart, and come back to you. So after a few minutes you can see we're back in Windows and we have updated to F4. So what I need to do now is to go into the BIOS and try a few things and see what happens. To do this just do a restart and press either Dell or F2. I'll show you what the BIOS looks like in a sec. So into the BIOS we go. Sorry for the camera recording but it's the only way I can capture this footage. So in the first option here we can set our various frequencies. So you can see most of these have been left alone. Uh, in the memory side, I have actually tried 2666, I've tried 2933 and 3200 with both 2 and 4 sticks and XMP and so far I couldn't get anything to work, uh, basically I ended up having to stick to 2133 on this update. Uh, before 3200 did sort of work, but it had a few issues, now it just refuses to even start up. Uh, on the CPU clock ratio we've set 38 so we're going to go for a 3.8 gigahertz boost. Uh, Ryzen 1700 has got very diminishing returns and to get 3.9 or 4 gigahertz you take a lot more voltage. Uh, anyway so the memory here you can see is basically left at default which is not ideal. Hopefully with a further update uh, that might be able to improve but definitely with 4 sticks Ryzen does seem to be very temperamental with memory. So the next thing to look at is voltage. So the only thing here I've added 
won five volts to the dynamic V voltage. Now I have tried various settings here and it is very much a diminishing returns. Uh, to get to 3.9 you need quite a lot more voltage and to get to 4 gigahertz uh, I didn't actually get that stable without a lot more voltage to the point where I wasn't really comfortable. Uh, so anyway, once you set what you desire voltage, like I said, I've gone for that for this overclock. All you need to do is to save and restart. So if you're overclocking the system yourself, I would suggest starting at 3.7 with no extra voltage and see what happens. If the system's stable, that's great. You could decide to go for 3.8. Uh, then you might need to add a little bit more voltage to get that stable. But as you do it, bear in mind that it will get much more hotter. Uh, you want to keep the voltage underneath 1.4 volts, I believe, and the temperature, I would suggest keeping it under about 80 degrees, uh, 80, 90 degrees if you can. It, obviously, it depends on what cooler you're using. Uh, if you're using something like an AIO cooler, you can get these temperatures down quite a lot more. So on the crosshair link you can see at the back, uh, the top three boxes are to do with the cooler. You can see the speed of the two fans and the temperature of the liquid. Underneath that with the green box and another temperature, that's the CPU. So you can see the CPU is roughly about 61 degrees, I believe. Uh, underneath that you can see there's a two te temperature settings there and that's for the temperature on two GPUs. On the far right we've got a temperature of the hard disk. I also want to add this has been running for around about three hours as I know AOO coolers can take a long time for them to actually get the heat built up. So you can see it's still remaining around about 61 degrees which is pretty good and like I said that is probably where I would like to keep a CPU. If you start getting into the 80 sort of territory then I would just start backing off the overclock. Um, and like I said the voltage again you, if you can go for under 1.4 that is better but if you can go for 1.3 that is much better. Uh, and like I said it is a very diminishing returns after this point. Each little bit you have to really fight a lot more for and to be honest you're not going to get a lot more speed increase from 3.8 to 3.9 or 3.9 to 4 gigahertz but you're going to need a lot more voltage and a lot more cooling and you're going to use a lot more power. So overall I would suggest sticking with either 3.7 or 3.8. Uh, if you really want though you can go for them extra numbers but I believe a Ryzen kind of stops at about 4.1 after that you're going to use so much power it's just not really worth it. Anyway guys that is another look at the Horizon system which I know I should have done a lot better last time. Uh, sorry for that video and hopefully this does have a bit better of a look at it all. But anyway guys if you have comments or suggestions as normal please leave them below they're always greatly welcome. Uh, anyway guys I think that's it for this one. Take care and have fun out there.